Welcome to another Factory Friday. I'm Denny. Today we're going to talk about winterization and maintenance of your boat to protect your investment. If you're not comfortable with the do-it-yourself jobs, I highly recommend you contacting your local marine dealership, marina, or boat mechanic to do the job for you. So when putting your boat up for the winter or decommissioning it, one of the highly recommended things is winterization, the freshwater system. What you want to do is you want to get some antifreeze from either a marine store or RV store. It's the same chemical. It's usually red or pink and follow the instructions. And what you want to do is you want to add it to your freshwater tank. We have a nine gallon tank, 14 gallon tank, 21 gallon tank. I highly recommend to overdose it versus an underdose it. And when you do that, we're going to flush it through the system and we're going to show you what to look for. As for the raw water wash down, what you want to make sure is one, you turn the seacock on. This only applies to a boat that's out of the water. This will allow the water to drain down. All your seacocks, as far as the drains on the live well, need to be open and you need to remove the strainer that's on the back side of here. If your boat is equipped with in four fish boxes, what you want to do is add a little bit of water in each fish box and the proper amount of the antifreeze. I would recommend more than what the proper amount is and then turn the pump out button for the fish box on till you see it pump out the pink chemical. Once the pink chemical is pumped out, you're totally winterized. After you've added the antifreeze to the water tank, what you want to look at, the freshwater pump. The freshwater pump has the white hose hooked to it with the filter. What you want to do is start cycling through your shower head in the back, your shower head if you have at the bow, and any other freshwater shower you have, head, leaning post, or whatever. Now, also, if it's equipped with the freshwater flushing head, you want to flush the head until each and every one of these outlets showing the pink slash red chemical. That way you know that it is all cycled through and it's winterized. You need to remember when cleaning your boat, there's some hidden things that you really need to take care of and it will create a longer life, especially for your fuel tank sending unit. That's one of the biggest things that has the failure rate high. What I like to do is I pop the front pipe plate off and I spray fresh water toward the back. Also, I keep the nose of the boat high. Then once I spray off the top of the tank, I will come to the back and wipe off the sending unit. Most sending units do not have the coating that's here, but this is dissimilar metals with voltage running through it and they corrode. So in older boats, what happens is it eats away and the sending unit for the fuel tank fails. This will cause it to last a lot longer by doing the cleansing. Be sure you dry it off after you rinse it. I leave the pipe plates off at least overnight and then put them back on the next day. We all know that sunscreen in today's life is our life, especially as much boating as we do. And I highly recommend putting sunscreen on. But that being said, we all like to spray stuff, but it, it's easier. Please put the spray stuff on before you get on the boat and put the liquid stuff or the cream stuff in the boat for reapplying. The reason I say this is the vinyl and upholstery will be deteriorated from sunscreen whether it's on your legs, your hands, your arms, whatever. It is going to be detrimental to the vinyl. It will dry rot the threads, it will discolor, and will dry rot the vinyl. But you still need to reapply. So make sure you carry some hand wipes, wipe your hands off after you reapply so you don't get on it. Carry some beach towels, put down. And also, that is also true for the steering wheel. Any rubber products that you put your hands around, it will deteriorate it and rot it. I know you want to keep your boat looking new forever. That's another good way to do it. But please use sunscreen. Also another tidbit about sunscreen. If you're fishing, 
and you have sunscreen on your hands, whether you use live bait or terminal tackle, if you use your hands that have the sunscreen on it, the, the fish can smell it and you get less bites. So if you want more bites, no sunscreen on your hands. Another good maintenance tip is you want to remove your prop every month or so and check for fishing line that may have got wrapped around and it will embed it into the seal and can cause damage and get water in all out. I'll show you another trick of how to check for it's full splash water. So once you've taken the prop off and you did notice some fishing line wrapped around the prop shaft, you remove it and if you're a do-it-yourselfer and comfortable with it and the motor hasn't run for over 24 hours in a down position, there's two plugs in the gear case. If you'll just take this bottom one out and if there's water in it, that'll be the first thing to come out. And if it's milky, milkshake color, it has water in it. And then you need to contact your mechanic. Once you've done that and you're putting the prop back on, before you put the prop on, you need to grease the prop shaft with a grease that is water resistant. So everything we've talked about today as far as winterizing and putting it up, decommissioning, you need to make sure the motor's down. And we're talking about out of the water, dry stack, on your trailer, whatever. And then you get it as far down as you possibly can. All the outboards are drained down, so there's no need to add any antifreeze to the box because it's gonna self-drain. Now, as far as putting it up for the winter and fuel system, you wanna put some kind of stabilizer in the fuel. And I highly recommend, look at your fuel gauge. If it says 100 gallon, fudge it a little bit, say 120, add the, you know, that. And then what you wanna do is put earmuffs on it, or if you're in the water, you start it up and let it run. Now, there's approximately a gallon to a gallon and a quarter in the line from the pickup tube, filter, fuel line, all through the engine. So watch your fuel flow to make sure you get past that gallon, gallon and a half so you know that the stabilizer is in your engine. This will stabilize the fuel, which will keep from rusting, corroding, or clogging up. Now, if you have a two stroke, two stroke outboard, what you need to do, same thing, but you need to fog the engine because everything runs through the inner block and goes through. Now, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can look at the owner's manual and see how to fog it, or you need to get your local marine dealership to do that. Another thing that, that needs to be maintained, which is overlooked a lot, is your battery. Periodically, what you need to do is make sure the surface of the battery is totally clean of debris, dirt, dust, grime. Because what can happen is with moisture, coming across this dirt and grime will create a medium coming across and cause a draw of voltage, which is going to do two things. One, drain your battery and overwork your battery charger. So every so often, make sure you clean the battery. Now, if you store your boat out of the water, there's no need to keep your battery hooked up. So disconnect the negatives. I wrap them together so you know where they go. And if you still want to use your battery charger or your shore power, then put the negative back on for the battery charger. But make sure this whole surface is clean. Another thing is this is a wet cell battery. I know there's, there's other batteries, there's gel cells and so on and so forth. But also you need to make sure that the, the level of fluid is up to where it's supposed to be. There's a little gauge on the inside there. Use distilled water or battery acid. But anytime you do any maintenance to the battery, you need to wear safety goggles. Thanks again for watching another one of Factory Friday here at Selfish Boat. And as always, boat safety.